Guys, welcome to My Girl Reviews. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is like an intro to the main episode we had to redo because our pitch, as you'll understand when we get into the actual podcast, we had to... <laughs> It got taken away. Um, we were pitching some ideas in this episode. Uh, My God Monkey was coming up with some great ideas about how we would save the Universal Monsters. Uh, shared universe thanks to the help of the Invisible Man. Unfortunately, the whole recording disappeared. Or we think Universal has stopped us from publishing that. Not really, but yes. But I hope you still enjoy the rest of the episode. Um, as always, subscribe, tell a friend and all that cool jazz. And yeah, now on with the show. It's me that's talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brilliant. You. You, you. <laughs> welcome to My Guy Reviews, the podcast. Guys, welcome to My Guy Reviews, the podcast. I am My Guy Brig. Today I'm joined by My Guy Monkeys. Hello. He's back. Yes, hey, he's finally here. Yeah. It's finally happened again. We've done another podcast. Yes, yes, still... it's been a little while. We've had a oh, short it's... gap on us. Sorry about that. No, there's, there's always something coming up, but yes, yeah, so we're back. Uh, should we talk about the virus that's pretty much wiping out the whole planet, or let's just ignore that and get straight to the topic? What, what the T virus? Yeah, cool? so the, the, the Resident new... Evil T virus has, has now spread, yeah. spread across the world. I heard about that, yeah, it started in Asia somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, because we've left Europe now, it shouldn't affect oh, us. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Because it's, it's not allowed to come over. Yeah, the United Kingdom is not allowed to come over anymore. It well, needs to go through right, immigration. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't seem to have worked because we've got more here than Europe. We've got more <laughs> we do. here than Europe. What happened? I know. It's, it's, it's weird, right? We're, we're a little island. We've left the whole of the European Union. And for some reason, it's still attacked yeah. us. Damn you, virus. Um, yeah. So, yes. to, so I've to had celebrate... virus for about four weeks, so... Oh yes. Um, to celebrate right this, to the I know you know um, you, you, what's what's fascinating. I was reading this thing about um, uh, in Italy. There's certain areas where they've quarantined whole villages and whole kind of areas. So it just makes you think. If that mm. came over here in this country, I don't know how we would be able to implement that. Like how no. how would you stop everyone from leaving a city or a location? Yeah. Um, we'll Two in, we're in, in two inter, interconnected by public transport, so trains and that. Exactly. It's hard to cut it off. As soon as he gets to somewhere like central London, because there's so many people from outside of London who work there, who come yeah. in and out of the tube system, it, it will pretty much spread throughout the country. Mm-hmm. Even though our railway system is one of the worst and it's most unreliable. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, yeah. Antiquated other... rails. Other than that, yeah, <laughs> we'd all have it. Uh, so our topic this week is not so on on, on our podcast. We normally come up with a topic idea, um, and it's not to do with um, the, the T virus. Resident, Resident Evil, no. <laughs> the Resident Evil. You no, know, it would. I should. You know, I should. I should have done that. You know, this actually. This this yeah. this podcast is kind of. Uh, but instead, uh, this episode, I'm I'm calling it My Guy Monkey, the pitch. Okay. So you're gonna you're, you're gonna do some elevated pitches. Now you have, as always, when we do a podcast, one person comes up with the topic idea. Um, in this case, it's mm. me, and the other person has no idea, concept of what's going on, and mm. I blindsided you again with with an idea that you have no idea about, and it no, hopefully no hopefully goes down really well because you'll have to think of this off the cuff, or it goes down terribly bad. I'm brain dead, so I don't know how it will go. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, so um, first, first we're going to just talk about um, uh, do t- do two quick reviews off the top, okay. and then we'll get into the topic. So obviously, you saw Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. Um, okay. It's one, one of the biggest well, video yeah. game franchise movies of all 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 time so far. Well, it's also it's got like best, best reviews television. and stuff. Uh, and yeah. based on all yeah. the other films you've seen so far, is this the best video game movie ever made? No. Oh, simple, simple, simple. As simple. No. simple no. Yeah, I, I was really excited for it, um, yes. but it's just it's okay. That's all it is. It's it's okay. Um, yeah, obviously it's Sonic the Hedgehog. He's such a big icon. He he's got a big crowd draw. 
And I think I think films these days they go more for the crowd draw rather than necessarily the best movie. Like what whatever brings the crowd in, and then yes. they can say yes, we've got all these views, all these people have come and watched the movie. But people watch it based on the draw rather than the actual movie. So I think kids are just gonna love this film all the time because um, you know Sonic the Hedgehog. It's just, they just get so hyped up for it, I think, because it's even though it's a it's a mixed bag on the games, his his image and his character is so strong. But the yeah, the movie itself is okay. That's all. It was all. It's like um, Jim Carrey is brilliant in it, obviously, um, as Doctor Robotnik. Yeah. Um, and the other actors are okay. It's just some of some of the acting with the CGI looked a bit off and i think it's mostly down to the um Re- the main the character's what uh wife in the in the movie i don't know what her name is but she kind of looks off camera in a bit of a weird way um and from what i've seen from um some uh what's it called interviews with with the cast and that yes. i don't think they got a lot of direction in terms of where they should look when oh, they're where talking they were to the put sonic down oh, okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I heard something later on where there were things that they could look at, but then the first things I was hearing was there wasn't a lot of guidance, and actually the actors had actually had to put in their own sort of um, perseverance and you know their own efforts to make sure that they had a, they had good eyes on yeah. onto Sonic and things like that. So this it feels a bit weaker by the end, I think. I mean, but it, it starts off fairly strong, and it's an interesting look at. Um, Sonic before the fran- before the original franchise. It's kind of like a, a back to roots, yeah, uh, sort of thing. Um, Sonic looks okay, kind of cute. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's okay. it. He looks all right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it's it's doing really well. People are loving it, um, and people keep talking about how good it is in terms of comic book adaptation turned into film. Did so I haven't seen I the did. film without spoiling it. I... Does it have a lot of video game elements to it? So were you like, yeah, that was cool because there's a ring he caught or whatever? Um, I didn't, I didn't really notice much. There, there were apparently a lot of references to to things, like in Sonic has his own room in 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 the movie, um, which has got lots of references in it. And there's the occasional callback with music, um, oh, okay. which which you'll recognise if you've played the games. But apart from that. Uh, I can't say there really is. Um, I mean, it's good ca- characterization of Sonic. I think Sonic's been done well, and I think the main human that interacts with him is is it is, is, is does a good job as well. And um, yeah, obviously, Ro- Doctor Robotnik comes off really well as well. Yeah, Jim Carrey's done a great job. Everyone says. Yeah, he's always great though in what he does. He's he's enthusiastic and always brings something to the table. So based based on your normal rating scale, where do you rate this one? Yeah. Um, oh, well, this is out of four stars. Yeah. What, what's our rating scale again? It's four stars. Right. Go see it. <laughs> yes. Three, three stars. Pay for it. Pay for it. Like so, on video on demand or DVD. Yeah. Uh, Blu-ray um, two, or something. Two stars. Watch two, on the streaming service because you already own a streaming service. And the last one is always forget about it. Don't even bother. Um, well, I think if you're a Sonic fan, then then three stars. And now, so the first pitch that you're going to give me is, where do you take the sequel? So this episode okay. is called The Pitch. So we're going to talk about another film late next, and there's a bigger pitch that you need to do. But for this uh, one, give me your elevated pitch. Where does the sequel go from here? Oh, Who do gosh, you introduce? Okay. What new characters or anything you could think of? Where would you take it next? Okay, so so spoilers for the movie. Um, only Sonic appears in the movie until the very end, yeah. um, where uh, there is a little cameo from Tails right at the end. So that's so that's what we've got so far. So I'm I'm guessing we, we're going to have to have Tails involved. Um, but who knows, really? I mean, well, we've we've got set up already. We've got. I mean, this is going into spoilers for the movie already. But that's fine. By the Spoil end, the film. Spoil yeah, it. spoilers. <laughs> For the end of the movie. Three weeks now? Yeah, you should have seen it by now. Three weeks, come on. That's like <laughs> yeah. a lifetime. <laughs> it's like exactly. it's been on every Christmas since last week. So, <laughs> um, uh, Yeah, so Ro- Robotnik has been banished to the Mushroom Kingdom. 
okay. um, Mushroom Planet, which is basically the most boring planet that Sonic could have ended up at. Which um... oh yeah, and you were asking lo- uh, last episode uh, about the use of the rings. Yes, um, and they're very much used in this. Uh, I don't know if they if there is any lore that comes up in the later games that I don't know about, but the the rings are used for for teleportation okay. in this one. So he's got a little bag of rings. That's how he gets from um, Green Hill or Emerald Hill, whatever they decide to call it, where his homeland to Earth, and then he he can use them to sort of zip about to all sorts of places within Earth, or even to these other other planets. So. The Mushroom uh, Kingdom is like, well, it's not really the Mushroom Kingdom. That's, that thing that's Mario. Yeah. But it's a mushroom planet and it's literally just giant mushrooms. Um, so you've got Dr. Robotnik is there now. Oh, uh, he's cool. been banished there. He, he managed, manages to banish him, which means he's now going to be coming up with all sorts of crazy new technology to get back at Sonic. So oh, we've kind of got the, we've, we've kind of got the setup already of uh, where it's going to go. So I definitely think Jim Carrey will be coming back from what I've seen him talking about. He's, you know, he's, he's definitely on board with the film and he definitely wants to bring more to the, to the Dr. Robotnik character. Um, so you, you're going to have Dr. Robotnik. You're going to have Sonic and Tails. Yes. Um, the team that we always wanted. You know what? Sonic 2 in the video games was just uh, Tails arrived and that was about it. But I think they should fast forward it to Sonic 3. I think um, it would be great Knuckles. to see Knuckles. Yeah, I yeah. think why not jump straight to Robotnik using Knuckles. To, oh, yes, I like it. Just like Sonic 3 game. Um, so using Knuckles, tricking him. Um, Sonic has to go off to whatever planet he's on, defending the, the Master Emerald. And, yeah, you get a lot more CGI then. But um, I think you're going to have to base a lot of it on Earth as well, though. So it's going to have to do some teleportation because without having it on Earth, you don't have that that comparison of you know that reality. You yes. don't want it all to be CGI. It's all about having the real world with what great CGI we can include into it now. So yeah, I go for that. Are you sold for that? Yeah, I, I like detail? that. I think I think bringing in more people. I thought you might say chuck in another Sega character, someone off oh, off yeah. board, so a completely different random character. I don't know. Like, oh yeah, Alex um, Alex Kid, of course. I mean, Alex Kid was their mascot before Sonic, Sonic. Hedgehog. Yeah, so just to just a call back to someone else as well. That'd be quite cool. Maybe yeah. they you know they run past a arcade that's got Wreck It Ralph in. Yeah, Wreck It Ralph. Yeah, chuck it in. Real arcade back <laughs> yeah. in the it was yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, that, that that sounds good. Now, I, I quite like the idea of Sonic 2 now, based on what you've just said there. You sold it to me. So uh, <clears throat> I've just got um, just going to have to take a little break because I've got Boiler Man who's come to fix our radiators. OK. And I just I just need to go speak to him. So we'll come back and we'll do pitch number two for movie number two, which Excellent. you haven't seen. And you're okay. going to have to do a completely new pitch. OK. OK, back, back in two minutes. Back in two Okay, and we're back. That's boiler talk done. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. For now, um, he might he might call again. I don't know. Uh, okay. In this country, uh, we're currently in winter, and this is the only time of the year when your boiler breaks down. It never breaks <laughs> down during the summer. It never breaks down when you when you don't need it as much. So yeah, it's it's, it's a bit frustrating, but it's getting fixed. Excellent. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope so. Uh, so, so now, uh, so. The, the, the second part of the episode is I'll do another review of another film and then you're going to uh-huh. do another pitch. So we, we did the Sonic the Hedgehog. That's the one, one I watched. Them. That's the one you watched. That's one. And then you did your elevated pitch for where they should take it for number two. Mm. So now we're going to talk about another film. So this, <clears throat> so we're, uh, we're in the first week of March. So up until now, there's been maybe about eight, eight, nine weekends in US box office terms. Um, and mm. in that time, I think there's been about six to seven, maybe six, six horror films that have been released so far. Can you believe right. that? So six horror films now. Yeah. None of which have... Yeah, it's a lot. Um, not many have come to the UK so far. Uh, oh. Most of them have done really bad. So we'll play a game a bit later maybe about them. But at, the, at this weekend, the best horror film of the year so far has come out. And so we're going to talk about the, the best horror film of the year so far. We're talking about The Invisible okay. Man. 
Have you seen yes. this? Now this. No, I haven't. Okay, brilliant. I, I, so would, I'm gonna... I want to see it, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay, so this 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 might be rubbish. This might be really good. I'm not going to show my cards <laughs> just yet. <laughs> but uh, if if I was to say to you so far, most of the um, horror films that have been released, like The Grudge, Fantasy Island, um, I think they're the only two that made like double digits. All of them have been they've just been terrible. Uh, critically and com- um, fan base has been really really poor on all, all of them. Yes, so that was spoiler man again. Okay, so um, <laughs> sorry, pause, let me pause this a sec. Okay. Okay, yeah. So the Invisible Man came out this weekend. It came out in the UK as well as um, America, which is not not always the case for horror films. They kind of like get. Um, delayed a little yeah only kind of like the big budget kind of films and the reason why i talk about this is because i want an elevated pitch for myself about the dark universe now do you remember the film the mummy mm-hmm. starring tom cruise i uh, didn't watch it but yes yeah so um, <laughs> i know <laughs> um that was supposed to kickstart the big new um mm-hmm. universal classic monsters shared yeah. universe didn't do where... it very well <laughs> exactly so now Invisible Man's here, and then we'll talk about that in a minute, and then you will pitch to me how we can get the Universal Classic Monsters together. At first, pitch me their solo films, a couple of them, and then how they will assemble together, like the <laughs> Avengers did, in their shared universe. Similar to uh, um, Annabelle did in Annabelle um, Homecoming, Homecoming, the Spider-Man spin-off that she <laughs> was in. <laughs> where Annabelle assembled her group of uh, villainous, um, possessed items, and they all came together in one yeah. film. So, th- so that's where I'm trying to take this: is like, how will you <laughs> resolve the shared universe and your elevated okay. pitch for that? Because okay. it was originally done. You're, you're right. The Mummy film came out, which was Tom Cruise's. Not many people watched it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a massive failure um the problem is maybe they spent too much money on the film um mm. and then they thought that tom cruise is this massive action star he can sell anything and they mm-hmm. were going to make him and then um but they 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 had invested a lot of kind of like um already had signed up um angelina jolie russell crowe mm. johnny depp um bardem as well like as these cat people were going to come in and become the the shared universe's monsters or whatever. And the first one failed, and then they parked everything else thus far. And then um, Blunt House, who made stuff like Paranormal Activity, who'd been uh, Purge, had loads and loads of horror films, all of which Get Out, Us, all like small budget horror films, turned out to be you know, massively successful. And yeah. who better than james wan's protege who makes this film so james wan's the guy who did uh, the conjuring universe mm-hmm. he's the guy who directed the first one and then they've spinned off into this massive okay. uh, shared universe and he's a protege who's worked on um, a bunch of films for him and helped him in a lot of stuff this is not his directorial debut this is his third film okay um and he and he's the guy who's basically made the invisible man And we'll talk about Invisible Man now. And then you will then tell me how we get the next (laughs) monster in, what their solo film would be, and then how Mm -hmm. we can get them all together to come together as assembled villains or goodies. We don't know yet because it's up to you and how (laughs) they can all coincide in a film together. Okay. So your job is to be Kevin Feige here, (laughs) the man who's behind the cinematic universe, the Marvel stuff. Yes. Okay, so the the director of this, uh, did you ever see a film called Upgrade? No, I didn't see that. Oh, it's, it. it's it's a really really good film. He he's he directed that and he directed Insidious Chapter Three. Ooh, did you watch okay. that one? I can't remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I well, watched he, quite he, a few Insidious. Yeah. So the, yeah, I there's think been I about did. four of them, I think, so far. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he he helped with the writing of the first two, and he directed the third one. Then he did upgrade, and now he's done this film. So, the, so the premise of the Invisible Man is is basically very simple. I, I won't 
give too many spoilers away. We'll go into that a bit later. But it starts off, and it's in the trailer. So it's it's a it's a lady. She's in an abusive relationship with this man who won't let her leave. Who you could tell by just the starting, and it's in the trailer. It's just like she's trying to leave him. She's trying to escape his hold. Um, yeah. And she's leaving the house, and she puts the camera on him so she can just check to see if he's awake. And then she makes her way out of the house slowly. She kicks over the dog's bowl, and he's right. still asleep. So you're like, Shoo, you know, dodge the bullet there. Then she goes to the car, and she's about to leave. And then the dog comes, and she's like, Look, I can't take you with me. But he's got one of these um, collars on, which I think either stop right. him from barking or a proximity one, so he can't leave the premises. So yeah. he's the dog's also experiencing the same level of abuse as the the lady, but mm-hmm. the the dog's <laughs> abuse is never kind of we never we never really go into that. It's a shame because yeah. it's you know like <laughs> the poor abuse. exactly you know you're not what, letting the dog live its life on its own exactly that's the oh, freedom they're, they're taking away his voice um, and they, <laughs> and anyway so um, she, she's trying to make a run for it and she knocks into the car the car alarm goes off and she runs off. And as as doing so, she she gets down to a particular road. This, this is all in the, the trailer so far. And then a car comes back. She jumps in the car. And it's this, it turns out it's her sister in the car. And she's going to drive her off away from this guy. And he comes running in, smashes the window, trying to grab her out. Right. That's just the start of the film. And then, obviously, the, the rest of it stuff will happen. We'll talk about it. So it's, it's, it's about this relationship more than anything. Elizabeth Moss, I've never seen her in anything. She's in, um, you ever watched Handmaiden's Tale? No. And she's really good in this. So it always feels like once, once she's escaped him, and then, again, not spoiler, it's in the trailer, um, he dies, and then she feels like she's been stalked by this invisible presence throughout the film. She does yeah. such a good job. Like, she... she She's feeling paranoid. She feels like everyone's Sounds no good. one's listening to her. It feels like she's still in this relationship that she can't get out of. And she talks mm. about the things that he did to make her kind of leave her family. Mm. She, and how he isolates yeah. her from her family, her friends, and made her feel really lonely. And it's really good. It's really done well. Yeah. Like this, well, this that's thing, real stories. So, exactly, you know, yeah. A reality for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, in uh, in these kind of relationships, and she does such yeah. a good job in portraying that. Right, even after he's dead, there seems mm. to be something out there Probably. that's still bringing it all back and trying to um, put her through something similar. And there's yeah. at this point, we're not sure what's going on, and you're kind of well, is she is she going a bit crazy? Did he die, yeah. and and she just can't get away from it anymore? Uh, yeah, so well, psychologically, of... you're going to be in that situation anyway. So this is that's what you're going to feel like, I guess. Yeah. You, even though he's gone, there will always be, you know, you'll look over your back every so often or you'll feel that yeah. there's someone there who's still stalking you or he's still trying to come, come after you. Yeah. Um, I mean, PTSD and all that sort of thing you'd get from that situ- situation. Exactly, yeah. It. And it's and her performance is really good. It's good as well because they they actually talk about the relationship a lot. They they show you the kind of abusive side that she, and what effect it left with her mentally going forward, which is mm. all good. Like all of these elements you, you could have in a an indie film. It doesn't have to be yeah. a horror film, and it would still work. But you've got the elements of horror that will come later on. But all mm. of that is so good. You just kind of initially I'm watching the film. And I'm glad nice. I didn't watch the trailer because the second trailer showed off a lot of stuff that was good <laughs> in the film. But there are yeah. some great bits that are not in the trailer, which which I'm glad they didn't put in. Um, so then, mm. then she goes and she starts living with a friend. So she's kind of hiding from this guy. And then, as, as in the trailer, she gets like a, <clears throat> a phone call from her sister to say he's dead, the abusive partner. So then she goes and she finds out she's inherited some of his wealth, um, but it'd be Mm. paid to her in installments. Um, And it's her brother. It's the abuser's brother who tells us all, tells her all of this, you know, there's going to be this much money. You can get X amount for the next so many. So after she gets the money, she feels she's almost, she's trying to let go and she's trying to move on with her life, but she feels 
there's something that's still stopping her from kind of living and there's something that's still holding her back and Mm. that's that's the cool bits about this film like obviously it's called the invisible man and there is an invisible Mm. man in the film but those bits where you almost think she just can't she doesn't know how to kind of even though she's got closure initially from the Mm. from the bit that he's dead she doesn't really because he's still there in her head yeah. Um, then, then obviously later on, there's an invisible man who's stalking her and haunting her, and he's putting her through something similar. And he sends an email from her account to her sister to try and um, break that relationship. He then starts to—it's called Invisible Man. So, spoiler: I've said man, haven't I? Um, so, <laughs> I could, could have been I woman, think... uh, but the, the yeah. name gave it away. Um, so, okay, well, I mean. I think in the public domain, I, I think we've got the idea that the Invisible Man is her ex-boyfriend. So, so if that's part of it, you can spoil that straight away. Okay. That, I think the idea is that, that is that he becomes the Invisible Man, maybe fakes his death in order to continue stalking. Spoiler alert! You spoiled most of the film. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Spoiler alert! Yes, that's, that's the public. That's, that's in the no, public that, domain. As no, no, that it. that's hundred percent is. Um, and then obviously. Um, <laughs> So as 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 time goes on, that invisible man, which I wasn't going to say who it was yet, but yeah, okay, <laughs> simple. It's it's her ex boyfriend, the one who faked his death. He's. Yeah, I mean, you're lucky you didn't hear <laughs> much about the movie. This I know. I know it's still a good surprise. Um, he starts wish, tormenting. Yeah, yeah, he starts tormenting her, and he starts to break her away from these other relationships she's got. So her best friend that she's currently living with. She breaks that relationship. She he isolates her from her only family member, and he does the same things while while no longer living as the Invisible mm-hmm. Man, but what he used to do previously. So it's really really clever how that plays out. Um, there's some great, genuinely great scares in this, like jump scares. There's a cool bit mm-hmm. where um, what they do is they leave the screen lingering a little bit too long, so you can see something in the background. It might not always be in focus, yeah. which is quite clever. Um, and she, she's not like a normal final girl. She's actually quite a smart, clever final girl, like in um, okay. the film You're Next, a really good underrated film. And she's very clever in this. Like She sets traps and stuff to try and make people believe that there is a force or entity trying to get her. So she puts like yeah. stuff on the floor, there's a bit where she's hiding and she looks at the carpet and you see the prints of the, f- the footprint go into the carpet and then she attacks the invisible man, stuff like that. So it's not like mm. typical, not typical, but previous final girls used to just run in one direction yeah. and used to just trip over and fall over stuff and get caught. She's a very smart lady. Mm. She's very good. Um, and then as, as, as she gets stalked and he, and he does the same sort of things that he did previously with her, but now invisible. Mm. Um, it's actually smart. There's a there's a bit which is in the trailer, and I, I kind of want to spoil it, but it's in the trailer, so I can't really spoil it. But she goes mm. upstairs to the attic, and yeah. she's been she she phones his mobile number basically, and she finds that it's ringing in the attic, and you're like shit, <laughs> the invisible Classic. man's in your house. Classic stuff, right? So she goes Classic. upstairs, she sees the phone, she picks it up, and a text message appears on the phone. And it says surprise. Oh, mm. it was wicked. Um, and then there's a there's a paint bit which is amazing as well. Don't want to give too much away. And yes, there are there is a little twist and turn to it, but it's a really really good, well put together film. And its yeah. performances are really good. I don't want to spoil yeah. too much more of it, but it's really really good. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. I mean, I've I've had this feeling that it's a good movie. Uh, that there is, it is a remake of old, of an older movie, but no, this is I think original. It, you are, well, it's, it, it's you. Yeah, of the it same is. character. <clears throat> it's it's the same character, but yes, I think the movie is so old that it's not something that you know it's it's something that can be redone properly and improved oh, yeah. on. Whereas a, a lot of things like they're <laughs> current and perfectly good to watch now, and they don't really need remaking. So yeah. it sounds like this one really ups the ups the game with the horror elements and the psychological elements. So yeah, it's more psychological terror, like how mm. this this man even after death is able to still manipulate her surroundings 
and still play such a big part in her isolation and making yeah. her feel lonely, even though he's not physically there anymore. Yeah. And, and it's done even so be- well. Even before he turns up as an invisible man, he's still got that hold and that grip. Yeah. So, yeah. Because when they first go to the courthouse and she's been told he's dead and they're having the conversation with the lawyers, and she mm. even still at that point feels his presence there. She, she, she does such a good job that sometimes yeah. where she doesn't say anything or she's just sitting there or something, you still feel like she can't let go. There's something there. Um, and then obviously something happens and this guy is able to turn invisible. You know, mm. Don't want to give too much away, but obviously Science. he becomes yeah. invisible. He becomes the invisible mm. man. Um, and then, you know, he's stalking her and, and there's some really cool bits. There's a restaurant bit, which took me out you know, just knocked me down did not see that come in some incredible mm. bits in the film as well performances are great and it's left open for potential sequels but not to the point where okay. if this was the only one it's open and closed they've done such okay. a good job it's just it's a simple open closed standalone film. yes standalone but extendable as well but yes Easily. So there are no post-credit scenes, nothing to um, sprinkle in that there's a shared universe yet. <laughs> it's just That's simply good. there's an invisible man stalks his prey. Something, lots of things happen. Film ends and there could be a sequel mm. or spin-offs or whatever you want to call it. Very yes. good film. Um, this is this is a watching the cinema um, for myself, I'd say, without okay. giving any more spoilers, because I know you want to watch it. So I'm not going to spoil any more. Yeah, yeah, good, good. So, <clears throat> this was originally going to star Johnny Depp, um, right. the Invisible Man. So, so basically, uh, Universe Pictures had this re- idea that they were going to do the Dark Universe. Mummy was the first one. They were going to do Bride of Frankenstein. They were going to do the Invisible Man. I think Bride of Frankenstein mm. was going to be Angelina Jolie. Um, Johnny Depp has the Invisible Man. They had uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, Russell Crowe. So they put mm. like big name stars into it. They're going to pump tons of money into it. And they thought, we'll do the shared universe. It's the wrong idea. Yeah. Take these horror characters, put them in small budget movies, and then yeah. turn those horror films as standalone good horror films, and then sprinkle in the shared universe, just like Conjuring. So Yeah, it now, should be done. Yeah. So now the pitch. Okay, so <laughs> Universal Monsters, there's, there's a whole heap of them. Um, I want you to pitch the next Universal monster film. You, uh, okay. I'll, I'll give you a list of people, and you, you can pick whoever you want you to be the next choose. one. Okay. And then we'll see how long it takes, and then you can pitch another one. And then how would they assemble, and who mm. would become the 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 yeah the Avengers style uh, assembling of these villains to come together, and mm. and and then that that would become their shared universe. So with Conjuring. Just, just so if you want to use that template, he just made a Conjuring film, Conjuring 2, but then they made stuff like Annabelle, they made None, and they made other films off of that. But mm. um, Annabelle featured in Conjuring, but then she had her own film, and then they did her kind of Annabelle creation and then yeah. Annabelle Homecoming. So they, so they placed her in their house. So yeah. you could place the invisible characters or wherever you want, <laughs> however you want to do it, okay? So they, they kind of establish <clears throat> establish one thing at a time, yes. a bit like Iron Man had three movies before exactly. they started connecting everything. Well, well. Avengers um, came after Iron Man One, Iron mm. Man, uh, Captain America, Thor, The Incredible Hulk as well, and Iron Man Two. So they, yeah. you know, four characters had their solo movies, and mm. they introduced Black Widow in there, uh, Hawkeye yeah. as well. So I they're think all. It's definitely going to have going to have to be a number two of one of them so there's definitely going to, have to be a sequel i don't know of which yet though yeah so they they tried this previously with dracula untold did you ever watch mm. this film no i don't think so okay so dracula untold was going to be something similar as well so dracula untold was also going to kickstart the um universal <laughs> monsters that never worked <laughs> then they had yeah. a stab with the mummy that never worked and now they've got the invisible man so so here are some of the other characters you can talk about so you got dracula mm. you got frankenstein right. you got bride of frankenstein as well 
You can do a mummy okay. reboot if you want. Another the Wolf one. Man. Yeah. Um, and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, awesome. So you pick which character, and then you pitch me their film, and we'll do another one as well, and then tell me how you would bring those films together, and you can then chuck in more characters if you want. Mm-hmm. So this is the pitch. So which character do you want to pitch me? I mean, this is a big problem right here. I mean, all of these characters are kind of like public domain characters anyway. Yes. So <clears throat> anyone can just make more movies about these things. So yeah, yeah. this is a big problem for make, for like getting a grip on it all. Cause at least with Marvel, they had to buy the rights. Once they had it, no one else could do it. Um, they could keep their franchise and their characters strong. But here they're just easily weakened, which is a problem. Um and I don't know if, if any of them really need remaking. I don't know if we need another Frankenstein or <clears throat> another if you don't, Dracula. How would you do? How would you create your shared universe? So you know what? I think Invisible Man was a good choice for yes. something that that could be done better. And I think Creature from the Black Lagoon is another one. So I think that is definitely promising. I think Creature from the Black Lagoon would be the ne- would be the next one to bring to the table worth be, worth bringing to the table yeah um i don't know much about creature from the black lagoon but that's the point, that's, <laughs> okay, that's so, the whole point. we don't so, know about the, the creature so we can we can we can get introduced to this this thing do you know much about it so uh, <clears throat> the creature from the black lagoon um from what what i remember it it's basically it's like a, they have an experiment or something, expedition going into the right. Amazon, um, so, and they're looking for some fossilization or something, anyway, whatever it is. Similar to like Swamp Thing. Anyway, so they, they, they set up camp in, and the marine biologists turn up to this place, and then they slowly get terrorized by this creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm. Um, and I think it was a 1950s film. I don't know if there's been remakes or reboots since, but... There was one that I watched years ago, and then, yeah, there's been mm. various sequels. But it's a bit like Swamp Thing. Um, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a bit like DC Swamp Thing. So okay. they have to go into – so so where's your – what's your pitch for this one? Yeah, I mean, so it's the Amazon, so I think we can we can definitely modernise that. Like, we can have people going there to, to um, try to stop the Amazon being cut down because, obviously, that's more topical now. Yeah, that's why they're there. Um, we'll have maybe environmentalists and stuff being involved in this, and um, yeah, I mean the creature can, from the Black Lagoon can definitely be a force of nature as well, sort of play off on that or something like that. I'm not sure what what the uh, elements of the, of the creature itself are. So um, yeah, I'd have the you know you've got a band of of environmentalists going to going to um, Maybe face off with with some of some industrialization um, and tearing down the the rainforest and all that stuff, and then maybe it's that that starts things off. They're do, they're just it's just quite normal, and then just weird things start to happen, and yes, some some things something else is at play, and we don't know what side the creature is on yet. Whether it's whether it's just going to kill every kill and everything in its path, or if, or if it's got a preference to, or if it's got a reason for for what it's doing, may, maybe it's going to help them. Maybe it's not in their cause to to stop the destruction of the rainforest. Maybe it wants to save save its home, or maybe it's just it's just out for revenge against all humanity. Now we don't know. See that 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 kind of works. That kind of plays into um, a lot of the ideals of saving Mother Earth saving Gaia Uh, and Mm. this would be like you said it's very topical where you could have um, a team a very small team of um, protesters who go in there to try and prevent it and you've got the big Mm. oil companies or whoever it is trying to dig it up because they they found something but then Mm. the creature from the Black Lagoon initially seems to not have uh, it seems like he's just or it could be she Um, they they seem like Mm. they're killing random people or well, something's happening and we don't really see the creature for a while and and maybe the uh, towards the end we actually see that he was with the protesters but it's not clear throughout the film the protesters yeah. are dying but really the protesters are dying by the p- 
people who are maybe Ooh. doing the yeah. bad stuff. Yeah. But they yeah, die. The bad men are killing them off. Yeah, go, and, that's good. But they good are twist. dying, <laughs> and we're assuming that it's the the creature from the Black Lagoon killing them, yeah. but it's not. It's not. I think it'd be a challenge to make it work, but I like the idea. I think if 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 there's one element of this kind of because it's such an old property, and you're right, it needs to be modernized. You need to bring it in. This could this would be great for a horror film. Firstly, I think. If you if you do this right, the first two few episodes of Swamp Thing, uh, the DC TV show, are great. Like when they go into the swamp, it's always nighttime, and then actually Swamp Thing's a force of nature. He's not a he's not like a mm. a character who's I, I don't know like uh, any not like Dracula or something. He yeah. Swamp Thing uses the environment. The environment is him at the same time. So if you hurt the environment, you are hurting Swamp Thing. But then yeah. he can appear from anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back. Now it's time for our <laughs> segments. Segments. Oh my yes. gosh. Does that mean you watch South Park? Just finish watching South Park. Yes. You basket. <laughs> Um, I, I only got to watch one episode. Um, I'll, I'll say the title as always. See if you remember it. It's the um, okay. um, the Mexican um, Sri Lankan uh, staring frog. Um, I remember the staring frog. Yeah. Um, isn't it about? I guess about. Well, it's it's a Mexican staring frog that can kill you by staring at you. I guess that's right. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I'm not um, sure if it's actually true or not, or if it's just sort of uh, just um, people's paranoia. Yes, exactly. So um, basically, this, it starts off, um, They the boys have to do a thing on Vietnam. Like, they have to do a paper on Vietnam. Like, they have to go yeah. speak to someone who's been to Vietnam, uh, talk about mm-hmm. their experience. So they speak to Jimbo, because that's yes. Stan's an uncle, and he's been to Vietnam, and he tells them this story about how there's like a roller coaster and how they <laughs> crashed and they saved everyone and then they got on a horse and all sorts of stuff. So they, they recite that back to Mr. Garrison. He gives them an F minus. Exactly, yeah. They made it, he made it up. And so they make up the staring frog. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and at the same time, Jesus has got a TV show, oh, okay, which, is, yeah. which, which is changing because he's losing ratings. Mm. And so he's changing the format from yeah. just him calling people and giving advice to becoming more of a Jeremy, Jeremy Kyle, yes. uh, uh, Jerry, Jerry Springer kind of style show. Hilarious. It's, it's, <laughs> it's great because even though um, uh, Jerry Springer, Jeremy Kyle, all those kind of shows is like, have come in kind of still are around, though. That's the good thing about it. So it doesn't feel like it's an old episode. It yeah. actually still feels. And the fact that these guys are... So Jimbo and uh, Ned start off by saying, oh, we can't just kill animals anymore. Remember previously that said, he's coming towards us. He's coming right for us. That's yeah. it, right? And then they can kill it. But now they have to say they're thinning the they're numbers. Thinning the numbers. <laughs> yes. It's they're brilliant. Thinning the numbers. <laughs> because if yeah. they don't kill them, they'll just starve and die. There's always a reason. <laughs> it's brilliant. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a good episode. It's, it's so funny, like, they can find a loophole in the hunting laws and they can still yeah, go out and do these ridiculous things. It's brilliant. And it's also and that, it's still current because of the Mexican staring frog, of course, with the virus going around. Yes. Everyone's scared different. of the virus. Sort of, so. <laughs> no one will stare okay. at the people. Have you... Um, <laughs> there was, there's, there's incidences of people being at, um, attacked as well if they thought um, people think that they're mm-hmm. from a certain country or they, they cause the yeah. virus. It's... Right. it's this pandemic out there is crazy. It's, it's a, it, it's the travelling that 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 puts you at risk, not <laughs> your nationality. Exactly, it's got like. nothing to do with you. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Just like okay. South Park, a brilliant episode. It's like South, it's like South Park with countries. <laughs> it is. <isn't> it? <laughs> so, so do you remember this episode now a little bit? I remember that much. Yeah. I can't remember much else. Thinning Talk, the numbers. Thinning the numbers. It's it's brilliant when they do it. It's so funny because they just go and kill all these deers. <laughs> uh, so it's yeah. another it's another great episode. It's still early, so we're still in season two. What's your rating on this one? Um, 
I give it a four stars. I don't um, know. I can't remember what what inside it is funny, but I think all of the premises are gold. Yes. And yeah. they're not dated as well. There's still there's still things that go on which are relevant yeah. about this. I'm sure people make up things about um, when they do these school presentations, but also yeah. the stuff about hunting laws, it's always a grey area. So people just make up what they want as they go along. It's brilliant. Yeah. And you know there, there are theme parks in Vietnam, I'm sure. So <laughs> Yeah, there must be, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They didn't make it, it up. This probably it's no, all no. True. I'm, I'm yeah. sure there is true. And then he gets on a the horse. Yeah. In their universe, I'm sure it's true. Yeah, exactly. That's what must have. The thing is, if you imagine it, um, if you imagine something that really happened, and if you got it in your mm. head that it really, really, really did happen, even if it didn't happen, if you're mm. in a lie detector scenario, you will pass the lie detector because in your head true. you're so. Um, and subconsciously you're now so thinking it happened so yeah. if they did do a live detector on these two it would just say yeah that it passed with blind yeah. colours even with a person that's well trained yeah because live detectors can't actually do too much they're not they're not really very useful no but... <laughs> <laughs> that's they why they use them on these shows TV yeah, show. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant and, it. um, yeah like yeah there's a great Jeremy. bit where um, Jesus is doing this thing and he's talking to the lady and her husband and then he, he starts talking to the crowd and the crowd say the same thing. Oh, you should just kick him to the curb and stuff like that. Uh, and that's not even yeah. that's not even what she's talking about. It's hilarious. It's cool stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a brilliant episode. Uh, okay, uh, uh, should we do the next segments? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, so quick into my guy, quick <laughs> reviews. Uh, so quick reviews of things that we've yeah. watched or played or anything. So do you want to start anything? Obviously you talk about uh, Sonic I now. Do. I mean, my first one was Sonic, <laughs> which we've already talked about. Um, yes. I'll give my opinion on that. And you've talked um, about the sequel. And the sequel, exactly. Uh, I've had more thoughts on the sequel in, in our little break as well. I think we need to yeah. characterise, uh, uh, do a lot of characterization on Tails as well. Um because we learn a bit about Sonic, we need to focus on Tails' character as well. And maybe there'll be a bit of a, a, a best friend rivalry because Tails has turned up, but Sonic is best friends with the uh, human, so there's going to be a bit oh, of rivalry. Yeah. As well. so, Tails is that cuter, might be though. Hmm? Tails is cuter. Sorry? Tails yeah. is cuter, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he's he's, do- he's Donut Lord, so the other guy, so... You haven't seen it, so you don't know. No, I don't. I just know, I just know Tails from the, the game. He's just so cute. Yeah. Well, the now, human is known as Donut Lord. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't know that. But I was going to also say, because I only just found out Tails is a boy. I always thought Tails was a girl. Oh, yes. I think I think, I think recently you educated me on that one. So that's yes, something last new. Week. Yeah. Last week's episode, yeah. Well, you thought in between. No, no, no. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> what you thought as a girl. Apart from his little boy sort of voice, which is easily mistakable for a girl. Yeah, so so Sonic we've gone through. What's next on your list? Yes. Um, what else is there? Uh, I've been playing Watch Dogs still. I already talked about that. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful city. I think I've talked about it, haven't I? Uh, a little it's just bit. A beautiful I think you city. talked about it. You purchased it and yeah. got a bargain on it. and then Okay, I so I didn't talk about playing it. No. Um, well, it's just a, I just mainly wanted it because of the beautiful um, rendition of Chicago. So I just love wandering around Chicago. Um, I, I haven't completed the story because straight away I just wanted to wander around. Um, there's and you can uh, do ad hoc sort of ch- chasing criminals. So I've just been chasing criminals and wandering around Chicago. So I just, it's a beautiful game. And there's a whole um, there's a whole uh, problem with it when it released with the with the difference between what they showed on screenshots and uh, footage. If you remember, it was in the very early day of the PS4, it's, and and the game ends up being looking like a, a big downgrade compared to what they showed. So there's a big kerfuffle oh, okay. about that. Okay. So I'd... yeah, so, there so, seems so to so be the... some hate out there for the game because of that. So um, were, the, were the images, high-res images that people thought the game would look like and the game was actually lower in well, quality? Well, yeah, they had 
they had actually uh, they had actual video footage as in in gameplay footage yeah. um, that they claimed was real uh, as far as anyone knew anyway and it was just absolutely beautiful like high 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 end pc sort of value and it was before the ps4 had come out really so well, when the ps4 was coming out i think which means that you know we were expecting something new in the, you know a, a jump in quality yeah um and i think maybe I, I reckon it was probably down to sony pressuring them more than anything to make their console look better um but people just ba- blame you ubisoft or whoever it is ubisoft, of yeah. course um and yeah i mean the, the thing is the game is still beautiful it's um it's not as it's not that high end as it as it looks but you can you can play it on PS3 as well, and you can notice noticeably different in in the quali- in the details of the um, buildings, and yeah. and it's always down to water. Like when when they when the, you get a new system now, it's all about the water reflections and the water effects that actually makes it look different. And it's still beautiful when it rains, and it's especially yeah. when it rains in the dark as well. It's just lovely to look at. Um, I quite enjoyed the. Uh, there's a thing called uh, Privacy Invasion, that's an open world thing as well. But there's only a limited number of them that you can do, which is a shame. I would like to see more of that. But it's great because it's all about technology. In case you don't know, it's all about um, hacking and technology, yes. and sort of where technology is going, and you know, Big Brother being able to spy on you and track you down and all that sort of thing, and steal your money. Um, so you can actually. Uh, hack into buildings and sort of spy on people in their homes which is great but it's only limited to like a few like maybe 20 seconds each one oh, okay. and it's like a, a little snippet of scenario that they've already pre-written and i would like to have seen that a bit more because the idea of just spying into people's homes is such a such a, a bad idea but you know it's like what you expect with this sort of watchdogs um well it's what people do so. now right yeah, exactly. People are doing it now, so it's crazy. So I would have liked to have done that in a game rather than reality, just to be just to be clear. Because um, you, you heard about the people who um, was it Apple or um, Google? Um, so those yeah. um, the Alexa and the Apple Pod and all of them. There's a there's yeah. an option. She's always listening and they record conversations. I think it's Apple employees yeah. who are listening back to those conversations. Wow. So yeah, so you've got that. You've got what you're talking about in Watch Dogs is actually yeah, um, yeah. kind of like relevant still. Yeah, more so and now. Google, Google just take data of everything. They, they data save mining, all, yeah, of course they do. All of the data you've ever ever if it's ever heard, they're saving it. Like they they might not be accessing it, but they they're saving it and using it to gain better control over people because they can use the algorithms and and find patterns and find out ways of affecting us which is pretty scary stuff which is kind of where Watch Dogs starts off and considering it's a fairly old game now um, I think 2013 or something um, it was kind of ahead yeah. of its time of, of what's actually going on um, obviously it was starting to happen then but, and it was just a little bit of a, of a slight look at what might be happening and might, yeah. what could be happening in the future and now it is happening so yeah it's cool stuff um, the, the the funny thing is that I think that I, I, about the game is that I just wanted to go in and maybe be a good guy, go and chase the criminals straight away. Yeah. But then I'm just walking down the street. You can hack people's bank accounts as you're walking past them. Okay. So obviously, obviously I need money, so I'm just walking. I'll go to go get catch a, a criminal, and I'm just walking down the street towards the criminal, just robbing everyone. On the way oh, by hacking yeah. them. Brilliant. But is yeah. that is, is that intentionally you're hacking them, or can you accidentally? have a feature that's turned on by accident yeah. so every time you walk past someone you just steal the money uh no it is intentional you do have to press a button okay yeah um and there is an upgrade where where it highlights people with um more ex- rich bank accounts oh, which brilliant. means you can you can maybe aim for them but it doesn't make any difference in the game but if you want to feel like you're maybe robbing from the rich rather than anyone else and actually i really like the neighborhood um like it's got the beautiful sh- city of Chicago and they've got sort of suburban areas, but you've got a proper rundown sort of um, area as well, like a, a massive neighbourhood of just. I, I like like those sort of areas because it reminds me of where I live anyway, sort of rundown and, and council estates and stuff and, and tower blocks. But also, it's just it. There's it looks so much more detailed and 
in the sense that things are all broken up and and damaged and sort of um, different levels and stuff. So it's a beautiful area. Yeah. And yeah, when I walked when I walked around that area, I just wanted to walk around slowly. Um, and yeah, I decided not to rob anyone when I was in that area because I thought, you know, they're down on their luck already. I'm not gonna, I'm not <laughs> gonna rob. Them. Yeah, I'm not gonna rob the poor people in this area. But it doesn't affect any gameplay because it doesn't do it by area or anything. But it's just you know, yeah, a bit of role playing. So it's, it is a bit of fun. I say there is one element that people may like, um, but I didn't like is that eventually, well. Only maybe four missions in, but I delayed yeah. the missions a long time. <laughs> um, you access uh, online mode as well, which okay. f- basically means that you'll be playing the game in single player. Um, you might like this because you like um, what they do in Dark Souls and Bloodborne and stuff. Yes. Um, you just walk Borderlands. Along. You're just trying to go about your normal life. Yes, uh, and then someone just patches into your game. You don't know it, and they're sitting there trying to hack you and and steal your money and oh. stuff. And then you've got to try and chase them down before they can get away. Oh, and so that's that, just one mode. I don't mm-hmm. like that mode. I don't, I, I don't no. mind them jumping in to help out because I'm all exactly. about the co-op play. I'm not Me about too. this. Um, yeah. Everyone coming into that's that's yeah. kind of like a. It's a bit unfair because if you, if you get to, I don't know how the leveling works, but if you get to mm. mission number four and you're quite new into the game, when you put in yeah. let's say two or three hours into the game, someone's put in thirty hours or forty hours, and and they're yeah. and they're just kind of waiting around for you to get to a certain point in the map, and they just kind of yeah, exactly. yeah. That to yeah. me seems a bit unfair, but with with stuff like Bloodborne, at least it it used to match you to someone who's similar. Yeah. So at least I, I you don't... Did, yeah, I don't think that there's actually much you can advance apart from certain technologies useful to like single player. So yeah. it's not too much different. But you're right. Like it just it's just that sense of people people that want that want to rob you is just not nice anyway. So uh, I don't like that sort of gameplay. But obviously it does add something. For one thing, it does add something that for people that like that an extra challenge that the game yeah. isn't offering. I think always that's a good thing about. Um, multiplayer mul- multiplier versus is that there's a way to skill ceiling that you you know there's always someone hard, better than you so yes. you can have a challenge and the other good thing is that you can turn it off so I just turned it off oh, once it activated <laughs> I switched it off I'm out of there I'm wandering around peacefully in the in the slums again chilling out so there's, <laughs> there's two happy. parts in uh, Bloodborne there's two levels where as soon as you enter the level this uh, bell ringer starts ringing the bell and yeah. until you don't kill her you can be invaded by anyone so that wow. so there's there's the sense of dread obviously came to a new area trying to work your way around it but then there's yeah. this extra sense that at any point anyone who's invading and that's all they want to do is they can turn up to your level and then obviously cool. they can they can quite kill you yeah other than that, there are no other areas like that so this is it's, mm-hmm. it's actually quite cool because you turn up to the area and so one of the areas you could turn up to quite early on in the game and you could accidentally go in there and the bell starts ringing and you've got to find her or yeah. be killed. But to get to her, you've got to kind of kill through loads and loads of enemies anyway. Mm. So, so it requires a lot of skill. And I'm sure people just sit on that level waiting yeah. for people to come in and then as long as yeah. they match within a certain point, killing them. And that's fine. I mean, I used to play uh, online an MM- MMORPG and they have certain maps that are PvP and other maps just aren't. So you yeah. know, you've got cert- you go to the areas that you want to fight, you can go there. And, if, you know, sometimes they'll put some high-value resources or something behind those things so that you've got a, a motive to try and get through there uh, and maybe a motive to defend it as well and you know, attack p- people. But generally, you didn't have to go there. So you know, that's, that's, that's a nicer way to do things. But yeah, it's, it's still a good game. I, I enjoy the game. Um, so thanks to the the whole open world of it, I just I'm keen to get the second one as well now, set in San Francisco. Oh, Although cool. it doesn't it doesn't look as grimy as the as this one. So this one sort of feels very atmospheric, especially sort of the rain, the, that sort of Chicago film noir slight feel to it. Um, whereas the other one looks a bit. The, the characters look a bit younger and it's all a bit just jumping around having fun sort of look to it so I'm not sure if it will feel quite as good but 
a nice thing as well is that you can there's a lot of uh, locations that have a lot of the, that have a bit of information about the buildings and things like that so you oh the actual you, landmarks in yeah, the real world oh, yeah cool. so you, you can even even in like the slum areas there's certain streets where people have been killed and gangs gang stuff happened in reality and oh, they'll even cool. tell you about some of those things so that's cool and also if you visit these places um every hour you can you can um compete to sort of have a hold on the area as well even in single player compared to other people that are playing online or people that are playing single player and just sort of visiting these places oh, which is a nice little thing as well it's a very peaceful sort of um the version of the competition so yeah it's good for the explorer like myself who enjoys seeing real real world places converted into game into game form it's great. It just shows you how advanced technology has gone. Like in 2013, they can map out mm. the whole, or most of Chicago, yeah. turn it into a game, actually walk down the street, yeah. and make it feel yeah. like you're really there. Yeah, feel like you're there. I mean, there's one thing that is still a case, which I think will always be the case, is that, well, for most games, is that they cut it down. They do a very cut down version. Yeah. But the way they manage to make you feel like you're in that city, they've given you all the little bits that make it feel like that city in different areas. Um, and it feels big, even though it's actually cut down so you can drive across it in five, ten minutes. Because otherwise, yeah. if it took you half an hour or an hour to get from one side to the other, um, you know, there could be a game that, where that would be good value. But <coughs> I think, um, excuse me, yeah, people want to have a bit more fun than that. Well, yeah. Sort of jump around. You could do that one of the quick. Assassin's Creed. You sit on the boat and you can sit on the boat for um, a few hours as it makes its way nice. from one location to another. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, but there's things you could do on the boat as well. Um, I think yeah. it's Black Flag or the one after that. Black, so that Black did, Flag. Yeah, I think that introduced that element where you Excellent. can fast forward your boat ride or you can oh, sit yes. in the boat ride and kind of do the whole thing. That's another thing as well, actually. Uh, they've, got, they've, they've got the tram system in from from Chicago as well, um, which I love riding. I just love, I love public transport. Um, you, you can't take a bus. I'm disappointed you still can't take buses. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a priority for any game developers that you can take a bus. But um, does, it cost, I, does it cost money to get on the tram or can you get on free? It doesn't free? cost you anything. Oh, they, they must have, they must have, they must have, um, what, what's it called? They must have have free transport in Chicago. I don't think they really do. But in yeah, Seattle, they must have they, subsidized. Yeah, in Seattle. Um, I remember when I was travelling in Seattle, I did, I, well, I was in Seattle, it was, it was one of the places I went to in America, and they did have free transportation. Yeah, um, awesome. Torrent, maybe Toronto, um, so you can get on the trams free. It was wicked. Yeah, um, unlike anything I've think... seen in mm. any country. I think I think Norway has just done it recently. That's this week. Yeah, so that's see, Norway or Denmark. News. Yeah, yes. Uh, they've made all public transport free, which is wicked. Which is awesome. Yeah. Way, way, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just love getting on the on the tram. Yeah, they're all above above street level, so you have to go up the stairs. You, and as you say, you can just um, go up to a map and fast travel to like a different stop, which is nice. But also, you can just walk on there and just try and spy out the window and just enjoy the view and oh. the journey, which is I just love that sort of thing. So I love that. Um, the other game I've been playing this week is an older game. I've been play- again. <laughs> I've been playing Chinatown Wars, a GTA game. I know you haven't played as many GTAs as me. You're not no. quite as big a fan as me. I love um, GTA. So, do you know what Chinatown is? And yeah. GTA Four, but GTA Four is too difficult for me. But GTA Five is. GTA Four is a bit difficult. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, do you, have you heard of Ch- Chinatown Wars? No, do you I don't haven't. even know what it is. No, no. not at all. No. Okay, so Chinatown Wars is the hand, a handheld version of the game. It's based in the same city as GTA Four. But a very cut down version um, for mo for it was actually for the um, DS first. So you imagine an entire the entire first the first two islands of GTA 4 yeah. cut cut down and put into an in, that entire air place in put into a sort of a top down sort of view like the original a little bit but sort of side on. Um, so it's not like gone full 2D but it's like that sort of style. Yeah. Um, but fit into the DS. Um, I'm playing it on Vita at the moment. Because okay. I've, I've also played it on PSP. There's a PSP version. 
Um, it, it's actually a PSP game that's you can you play on the Vita. I've played it on mobile as well, and I've played it on the DS. Oh, wow. So I just I'm a bit obsessed with GTA. <laughs> just a little. Just a little bit. Um, and yeah, if it's Chinatown Wars. You're you're following a Chinese guy who's moving to the city to um, after his father. I think it, his father dies, um, and he's bringing a ceremonial sword to deliver to one of the gang bosses yeah. as a sign of, sign of honor, respect, and all that sort of thing. And then of course things go wrong, and you're you're having to follow follow other people's other other people's orders as usual as most gta games do um but the great thing about this game that they've added is they've to make it well for one thing is there's no touch screen stuff which i'm a bit disappointed at because the psp didn't have touch screen so but i hoped that the vita would reintegrate it but they didn't yeah. but on the ds they've got they've obviously you have the dual screen and you have the 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 little pen thing oh, and yeah. you can um so so when you say when you want to um steal a car and you want to hotwire the car you'll have a little mini touch screen game to to play to get things started things like that um so that's quite fun um with the vita and psp version you just have to press buttons which isn't as fun but uh, okay. okay um and the other thing is um, there's a lot of drug dealing stuff that you can do um, oh, nice. you're you're basically you can make your well, own money GTA, by buying. Yeah. yeah, it's GTA, which they've done in GTA Five Online with the businesses. But yeah. Um, yeah, this you're just you're just yourself, just walking around. You you buy from, you, you know, you buy buy low and sell high. You yes. figure out which <laughs> figure out which ones, uh, which ones sell lower and which ones sell higher. So you can do it that way, and just driving about in between them, selling off, and you can just keep doing that. It's so addictive. And also, you get tips emailed to you. drugs. On what drugs yeah. to sell? Oh, amazing. So good. And you get tips. Yeah, you get tips for someone that's maybe selling at low price or they're buying oh. a high price. Oh, so yeah. So yeah. there's, there's always someone doing something that, and it can keep you addicted because every, every couple of in day, in-game days, you'll have another tip. And you, and you can have about three or four of them going on at once. And you can just be... And you can line, you know, if you get one lined up with, say, someone's buying weed real, che- real for a lot of money, which is one of the cheapest drugs anyway. But if um, if it's near an area where people are always selling cheap weed, it's perfect. You can just go back and forth, and then you know, um, maybe wait for the day for them to restock, and then just make a lot of make a killing on that. So it's really addictive, even addictive, even though you don't really need as much money as I've probably earned already <laughs> yeah. in the last few days. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of fun. And obviously that's really focused on mobile gaming as well because it gives you short bursts of gameplay that you can just do any time. Just turn it on, do a drug deal or two, to, you know, close it up 10 minutes later, get off the bus, get on the bus, you know, in reality. Um, you can catch a taxi in there and do taxi mini games as well, which, again, I oh, love nice. public transport. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> but, but you can't get on the trams in this one. They are. They oh. are tr- oh, well, it, they is, are, it, it is mobile gaming. It is. So the thing is that there are, there are a couple of tram stops and you can see them ro- roaming around, which is great. They hurtle past and you hear them and everything, which I do love. But you just can't go up the steps and actually catch them in this one, oh. which is a shame. Next one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they do try to <laughs> too. Yes. Yeah, if they ever do that. I mean, it'd be nice if they did that when they bring out GTA 6, if they do a companion um, mobile game again. Because this one basically came out at the same time as GTA 4. As, as, so you, you got that mobile experience as well. So that'd be great. That's the future That's the future setup then for that. Oh, yeah. And the thing uh, is, like, it, it's just going to show that like, mobile gaming has come on so much that you can do so much GTA yeah. stuff in there. Yeah, I mean that's this was years ago as well. So imagine what they can do now. They can they yeah. can probably do a lot, and they could probably add more online stuff as well, which they haven't done in this one because they're they're all about online competition and stuff, aren't they? So look forward to seeing something like that. Would be good. Um, yeah. Have you got anything? Or I've, I can talk about one more game I started yesterday. Yes. Strange. Um, Stranger things. 
<laughs> okay, so this is a game called Big City Stories on okay. the PS4. And it's basically like a mobile game where you set up a city and you have to earn money and energy and you have to set up the 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 companies that will you know the buildings that will earn the money yeah you've got lots of you've got lots of missions to sort of do achieve certain things um and it, it's free to play which is why i i saw it and i thought why haven't i got this one yet it looks like a sort of game that i would like like to see because i'm interested in sort of city gaming yeah and um, so i downloaded it and yeah it's, it comes up made in unity um and i have to say like it's not um what's the word where when when games are, are like highly honed down like highly well programmed and and optimized is the word i want but it's it looks really really silly like really terrible um not not ter- not um terrible enough to not play but like yeah, yeah it's, it's it's proper cheap looking obviously it's a free game um and it, it tries to, it's you can buy coins which is why how they make the money obviously of course so yeah. i was interested I was interested to see how that would ha- happen, and yeah, there's a mission quite early on, which is which is quite quite um, manipulative, where one of the characters that you can do missions for um, says says prove 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 to me your um, dedication or something by going and buying this building that you can only get with coins that you would would have to bought off or bought with real money. So that's a bit manipulative, but apart from that, most of the time you can just Everything else, you can play the game without buying it, but yeah, that's a bit weird. Um, it just means, you know, I think if you do spend coins, it just um, gives you access to uh, very high-end clothing and stupid stuff um, okay. and makes the game a bit faster. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the I don't know if I'm going to recommend it or not, but the, there's people can, eventually people can go and visit your city and you can visit theirs but there's not much to do in nothing to really do apart from just drive around in their cities there's a little bit of a taxi mini game in that you can play in your own city but it would be nice if they put that put that into the other cities as well just to give you something to do do, yeah yeah i mean you can chat with people if they're there but that doesn't seem to be a big thing for the game either because they're quite big areas well not that big but you know you're not going to be stopping and chatting to people much, I don't think. You just look at the city and see what happens. So there's room for improvement for what they could have actually did a little bit more better for the game. Um, but, you know, the fact that you can do a taxi mini mission and a zombies running over mission uh, is, is good in my book, even if it's kind of really tacky and lame. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if you, like, if you like those sort of mobile games, um, it's free. Um, yeah, and you know, I get, I, I tend to get addicted to them for a little bit and then give them up after a few days. So, I think that's Depending what on. everyone must happen to most yeah. people because they're free yeah. to play. So you start and you, you you get to a certain point, and then it's either you need to spend grind for hours and days yeah. to try and get, them, or just spend real real currency. Yeah, well, I have to say it's, it, it's building up quite quickly. It's not, it's not really taking advantage in that way it's not making Can't things fix. too hard so so it's an enjoyable day or two if you want to play it um and just to see how how kind of um plain the, the graphics are it's kind of funny and how how terrible the cars control as well you can you can barely turn the cars which is just oh. kind of hilarious <laughs> <laughs> I, I finally have found a handbrake which helps a little bit but it didn't tell me where the handbrake was um <laughs> yeah the, the uh yeah, the, the physics isn't great either, but it's just kind of funny to see what what someone has made. It's like someone has made it in Unity, like a fan, oh. but yeah, you know, just a person that wants to make money. <laughs> just, but um, I, I expect it was actually got some some big business business some behind it. Yeah, I was going to say big business always. <laughs> Zinger, probably Zynga or someone, you know. But it didn't say Zynga, I don't think. So who knows? I have to look further into that one. But yeah, that's that what. I, yeah, I just made it up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, Zinger. Uh, they 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 make loads yeah, yeah, of these. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They, they got, I mean, they do really well that way in terms of how much, how many games they produce. And there's so many of them. They must make enough money just from um, adverts and in-app purchases that the game itself yeah. can be given away yeah. for free. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think they could they could live off the first game they made, but I don't know which one it was, but I can't remember. I think I did know. Um, you know, they they must have succeeded on that one to keep on making more, and they, yeah. they're really popular games as well. So I we'll have to do I we'll have to do an episode on that sometime. So we'll look at what games they are. <laughs> look <to them. laughs> yes. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, I've downloaded Shadow of the Colossus. Um, yes, you did it. New yeah. and and Sonic Forces. These are the new PSN Plus games, uh, PS Plus games, free to play. Um, if you're signed up to PlayStation Plus. Yes, and there's always that debate that they're not free because you pay for. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, you pay you pay for the subscription. Where do you stand on that? I don't really use online gaming, so I I get I know because we you're PS3 paying was for free. Them. PS3 yeah. was free. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So I see it as yeah, I'm paying for these games, and if you think about like how much you spend on these games in the course of the year, it's about forty pounds mm. for the yeah. the membership for the year, and yeah. when you compare it with how many games they give away, which is about twenty four. Even if yeah. they're one pound each game, or, yeah. well, two pound each game, you've oh, made your yeah. money. If they are two pound, that yeah. is. Yeah, definitely. So, and I think it's they give away games that are maybe fifteen, maybe thirty pounds. Yeah, some of them are are higher value, so they're not yeah. all that. They usually do a bit of a mix, don't they? Sort of. Yeah. One one they're... one that's going a bit cheap and one that's cost more. And sometimes even the indie games cost about ten quid if you were to buy them. So yeah. even the good good indie games that they give away free of charge, they may be a bit older, but they're still retailing for about ten pound or something. So you still yeah, you get your money's worth. Yeah. If each if each game cost about five pounds and there's twenty four in a year, you made your money's worth, honey. So I don't mm. see what the problem is there. I think it's great yeah. value for money. I just think I don't play enough online games for it to worry about kind of like yeah, the £40 yeah. pound rip-off. I just see it as free games. Yeah. And it was great before when you used to get Vita and PS3 games. Yeah. I, I, I signed up just just at the end of that era, which is yeah. really annoying because I, I also got a Vita as well. So I had like one <laughs> month where I got the Vita and I could download games and then it was gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so many free Vita games I have, and I don't have nothing to play it on. Uh, um, I, I'll, have to, I'll have to hack your account. <laughs> yes, sharing is caring. As yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, you More don't have that. a Vita. You're not going to use a Vita. No, I'm not using Vita. I, just, I, just, I might even get a second Vita just so I can use your account. Yeah, um, of course. Uh, if Sony's listening, like... uh, we don't really do that. We do not no, share we the would, account. We would. <laughs> I mean, shown... you could... It's your account. You can let me use it. It's not of course, can, yeah. against that. But it's it's the same sure. as um, it's the same as when you do it at home with your family, right? If you got two PlayStations in your house, you, you, firstly you're mm. super rich, but um, some people do. <laughs> some people have that, so you you're gonna yeah, be paying yeah. for multiple uh, instead of paying for multiple games, you just reuse the same account. Yeah, no, I mean that would make more sense rather than buying the games twice. If um. I mean, I don't know if you can. Is it possible? I don't think it's possible to online game with two different people if they're using the same account. So if you wanted to play with the person in the other room, you'd yes. have a problem. But I think exactly. even a lot of games you, you can play if you log into another account, they'll still be on the same console and you can still play them. So especially if it's your your primary PS3 or whatever. So well, primary PS4. But maybe online is a bit more different. I don't know. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. I downloaded downloaded those two games. I haven't played them yet because they were downloading. So I, I downloaded Big City Stories at the same time, and it's a tiny game, and it arrived first. So. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> uh, so they are I, finally downloaded. I downloaded Sonic Forces so far only, um, okay. and and I played a bit of it. Um, we put some of the videos Thank- online. So okay. they're on the YouTube channel. Check them out. The links okay, will be perfect. below. Uh, it's it's weird because I've never played Sonic in this manner where it jumps. Sonic Forces, have you played it yeah. first? Uh, um, I haven't played it, but I've seen that it jumps between 2D and 3D. Yeah, that's it. On and... it's, 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 that's some of the level starts off 3D, and it's like you've got the environment, but you're obviously you've only got a small platform. You can only go so far. And then every so often, after a certain time, it'll jump into another part of the game and it's now 2d and it does the old classic sonic yeah do you like that 
Um, so far, it's fine. Um, yeah. Maybe when I play a bit more of it. So the second thing you have to do, you have to choose the avatar. And I created like a okay. Bugs Bunny character. So it oh, doesn't no. look like any of the Sonic characters. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and I just ran through the levels. Um, what I have found is you don't need to bash into things. So, so when you're running 3D and something's in front of you, you know, one of those little, yeah. w- w- whatever they are, I just move left and I walk past yes. it. And I don't run past it. Excellent. I just walk past it. I just walk, walk past it. Walk slowly. <laughs> yes. Walk slowly through the whole game. Not through the whole game. Because <laughs> you, you have so, to make jumps, don't you? So you can't yeah, just walk. Some of it speeds yeah. you up, I guess. Yeah. You could loop the loop and stuff. And all sorts yes. of bouncing around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they basically it's... did the same. Um, Sonic Generations is very similar to that. So you've got 2D. You've got classic Sonic, which is all 2D. 2D, and then you've got yeah. um, modern Sonic, which is just the same as that. It's like 2D bits, then 3D bits. So oh, okay. I think because they've got the formula down now, and that obviously that's working for them, that that's what they're going forward with for forces. So it sounds quite good to me. It's it worth seems a play, to work. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely worth. Would play. you say you're finished with the game, or you're still getting through it? Uh, I got to third stage, so no. I'm yeah. not. Um I'll I'll play a little bit more. I won't play loads more. Because um, see, see if I can. Yeah, see if you can complete nah, it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You, you always say, "Well, once I started a game, I'm gonna." I. You know what? I I do play to the end, but um, I, the only reason why I downloaded this one um because I'm not gonna play Shadow of yeah. Colossus for a while. Um, okay. I I want to try this because because we're talking Sonic for quite a while, and you got me intrigued into the Sonic yeah. cult franchise and. Because I haven't played many Sonic, Sonic games. I thought you said so Sonic cult then, you were about to say that. You could call it a cult. <laughs> it is the cult of Sonic, yeah. Um, so I thought I'll try this out. I'll give him, I'll give him a fair shout um, mm. and then see how I get on. But then I, I want to finish Bioshock. Shock. I'm so oh, into yeah. the first one. It's really like good. Um, so And then if, if the ending of it's really good, um, I'll go straight to number two. I don't think I'll stop. Exactly. So yeah, so... That. Yeah, exactly, and that's actually made for the. It was it's based for the newer consoles, right? So I'm sure the yes. gameplay will look better. It'll play better. So I'm yeah. leaving that one till the end. That might be the worst one of the series. I don't know. Well, might be the best of the highly, series. Yeah, I mean it's highly um, renowned. You know, it's, yeah. it's very very well loved. But I do think that from I get the feeling that maybe the original. I mean, maybe people just say this about everything, but like the original Bioshock is probably the best of it of what it is and they sort of build on it and yeah and they're gonna you know loosen up on the things that made it the best but at the same time just it's much a beautiful experience and stuff so i think you'll like all of them yeah so far i'm loving the first one so yeah i'm looking forward to the next two so you've got a lot of perseverance to do to get through all three of those (laughs) games yeah i mean this is what i mean about the playstation network right I feel like it's value for money because um, yeah. you do get some good games. And I, I won't play Uncharted because I played Uncharted 3. I didn't really enjoy it that much. So I'm not going to play those games. But yeah. certain games I will play to the end. I will stick. Like, like Last of Us, I don't think you even started. I played that all the way <laughs> to the end. And I didn't even like it that much. No. <laughs> but I stuck with it because I wanted to see what the big deal was. What was the big thing that everyone's talking about this game? Yeah. It was I fine. Think you... You, you obviously you have a bit more constraints on your finances as well, so so you're not going to just buy games that you're not going to play. So the fact that you spent that forty fifty pound on the PSA, yeah, you're gonna not not just that, but you're gonna enjoy every moment of in, in every game that you get. Yeah, um, well, not every game, but you know, <laughs> most every, of them. Every, every big every big game that you can invest in, you're gonna go a long time on that. I remember when I got my PS3 for the first time. Um, it was late on in the life, and I only had one game. It was Red Dead Redemption, and I and I, for the first three months or something, and I just I was deep into that game, yeah, and loving it because that was the only game I had. I didn't have any this anxiety over what game to play next because there was just one game to play. Exactly, that's that's exactly how I feel with a lot of these games. That some of them I wouldn't have purchased myself. Yeah, um, some I would. Like um, I know Borderlands Hands and Jack collection was on there. I, I already had a copy of that. 
um, yeah. Bloodborne, I already got a copy of that. So that there are games yeah. that they have put in there that <laughs> I've already got copies of. But generally, some of them, I, I'll be like, oh, I'd like to play that at some point. Because mm-hmm. I'm, because there's so many hours of content, like Bloodborne, I'm going to put in uh, 40 or 50 hours worth of gameplay into that to, to, to finish the whole thing. I would have put in something similar into Borderlands, maybe more. So by the time you put in that much, a couple of months have gone by on the PSN. And so instead of buying mm. another game, you just dip into one of them and you've got an amazing new game that you can play. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that. I'm not going to play um, Shadow of Colossus for a while. Uh, the other thing I finished watching was uh, Marvel's Runaways. It's finished now. Season three was oh, the last season. Okay. Um, it was quite good. It wasn't great. There's there's one episode where they do a crossover. I always love mm. crossovers. So um, another Marvel TV show, Cloak and Dagger, currently on. They the two the two from there turn up into Runaways, which is quite cool. Nice little kind of like a crossover episode. Oh, nice. Um, which is and and they they play themselves and you know they've got the Runaways. What was good was <laughs> the penultimate episode in the Runaways. Everything happens. The big bad. They they destroy it one of the main characters dies and i'm like wow. that's really good that's that's good <laughs> you know you don't yes. really do that yep. in kind of like tv shows or marvel movies uh, that much um, yes. but then the final episode kind Goes of back. ruins it all because they introduce <laughs> time travel oh, as soon as you time. do time travel you know the first thing they're gonna do is let's go back in time and save the person and we're like oh get that person. So, the, so the final yeah. episode they saved the person they did that oh, and oh, they no, no longer died uh, and it and, and the, the show ends and it is kind of like three seasons and finished but they've left okay. just enough kind of they've left one big nugget out there that potentially could have sequel uh, a fourth season okay. on and that would have its own payoff but otherwise it, if there is no more it's it's fine it's kind of done i didn't like time Close. travel no, as soon I as think they should have closed it. Yeah, yeah. Let let one of the key characters die. I I liked um, Josh Whedon's uh, f- um, Firefly show, right? So he got the show. He had these people. Then they cancelled the show. They went away and they did mm-hmm. Serenity the movie. And he thought, if this works, we'll get these people back for multiple films. People who didn't sign on for multiple films, he killed them. He just killed all mm-hmm. these main characters in the film. Excellent. And I love that. I think. Sometimes you just go for broke and just kill key characters, and it's good. It keeps yeah. It keeps it fresh and keeps it moving. It it, it keeps the stakes high because if if yeah. anyone can come back, then there's no stakes at all. No. You got to kill them off and they're gone. Exactly. Uh-huh. I think Game of Thrones did that really well. As much as the show was good, not great. I thought it's good. They just killed a lot of key characters at times where you may or may not have expected it, and I, and they just keep the show moving that way. Mm. So that, and that time, tra- of, time travel is a bad idea. Worst. Yeah. Yeah. Unless if you te- unless if it's Terminator, then it's unless fine. It, unless it's the villain. I I, I saw this thing. Uh, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos about all sorts of things, and I think one one thing was about um about sort of cheap new powers arriving just in time, like kind of ruins things. If if a go- if a goodie suddenly gets a new power just in time to to defeat a baddie, it's very unsatisfying. Yeah. It's the same with time travel, but it, it's reversed. If if like a villain suddenly gets a new a new power because it ups the stakes, makes things you know, raises the tension well. So if you're going to give time travel to someone all out all out of nowhere, give it to the villain. Yeah, that's not a bad. Make, idea. make it an extra challenge. Make it make it so that things are now even worse. That's that's I... what you got to do. I think that works better. I think you're right. I think if you're if you're raising the stakes, make it so it's difficult. Don't make it so it's easier for yeah. the main the main characters. No, the the main characters have to have to overcome their problems by using their own you know, what they have and what what they've built up in you know, in order for the payoff. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, I also um, I watched two, I think they're TV movies, but they're on Amazon Prime. Uh, shout out to Amazon Prime uh, because <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob reboot is coming out oh, this month oh, on I Amazon Prime. See. Yeah, it's going to be on Amazon Prime. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, sure. 
Um, I'll I'll just get it on because we've got streaming service, so I'll just watch mm-hmm. it. Um, but shout out to them. Um, and I watched a film on there called uh, Monster Hunter. So that, that there's a, a video okay. game. Um, there is a huge Japanese video game called Monster yeah. Hunter, which uh, the last installment was its biggest so far. Um, yeah. Mi- Miller Here Djokovic. Yeah, and, oh yeah, because it is it's the one that kind of crossover. The last one did the biggest crossover, and loads of people in the West have bought it as well for the first time, I think. Um, mm. And there's a movie coming out. Um, Mila Djokovic stars in it. It'll be out this year. Okay. With Tony Tony Jaa. It's another video game movie. Excellent. But the Monster Hunter game film I watched felt like a TV movie where there's this thing yeah. trying to kill these people, um, and they're in this town, and it comes out comes out during the day or night or whatever and it's killing off all this stuff mm. and then you see it right at the end it's like a cgi mess it's a terrible yeah, yeah. kind of cgi thing and yeah but it wasn't that at least good they at left all. it to the end yeah they did really <laughs> really close to the end and i and i love a good creature um horror creature kind of yeah. like movie anyway because like troll hunter's good um the the crawl i think we talked about a few weeks back was one of mm. quentin tarantino's favorite films of last year stuff like that is good um, and then I watched another one called Scarecrow. Okay. Again. Um, I've heard this one. Uh, it's, it's, it's obviously, you know, they're in some sort of, they're in a village, not a village, they're in some sort of state in America. Um, every year they have a Scarecrow festival. Uh, turns out that the Scarecrow used to terrorize the village years ago and they buried it underground. And now, yeah. because people were messing around, um, they've accidentally unleashed him, and he's and the CGI in this one's much better. Like the creature effect is good. There's only mm-hmm. one decent jump scare, I think, in the whole thing. Um, there's a really cool bit where um, his the scarecrow's head is hollow, and you can see through it, and no, you can see I... someone behind him, which is quite cool. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and it didn't feel like there was that much pe- terror and peril to him because he's mm. just a CGI kind of floaty kind of scarecrow thing but yeah yeah it wasn't that good but it's still better than monster, oh, hunter. Yeah, monster hunter yeah so i'm looking forward to the new one with mila yes. Djokovic and tony jar but the current one uh no the one, not the one you watched is it associated with the game and or is it no. animation no nothing no, not to do with the game okay. at all no okay <laughs> It's just by name, just purely by name, by chance. Oh, there you go. So avoid. So, yeah, avoid. looking forward to the next movie. <laughs> In the yeah. franchise, yeah. Ah, okay. Cool. Uh, uh, should we go on to the next segment? Upcoming. Previews. previews. Uh, yes. Have you got anything to preview? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm watching more of Jack Ryan. You know, we talked about John Kerensky, the guy from The Office, He's in the Jack, yeah. Jack Ryan TV show. Um, yeah. I've just got back into that, so I'm about four episodes in. So by the end, once I get to the end of season one, I'll do a recap, and then when I get to the end of season two, do a recap. So that's kind yeah. of like what I'm kind of flicking through right now. Okay. If you could describe the story in one sentence, just in case anyone is CIA just listening to this agent. one episode. He's like a CIA agent, um, and he's it, it's a bit like Homeland, but okay. instead of a female character is a male character okay that's the best way to describe it good sentence (laughs) cool um yeah anything else oh um i forgot in the the segment before uh, i watched a documentary (laughs) on little wayne so little wayne just released an album called the carter five um, and right. when he when he released that, I went and listened to the Carter Three, which is my favorite of his albums. And there's there's some it's it's the most commercially successful one. That's why I love pop music. Um, mm. And he's a rapper, <laughs> so uh, yeah. so I watched yeah. I watched the documentary, right. and it's it covers that album, the Carter Three, and the release of his next album. It's quite a fascinating kind of thing. Like he's just constantly in the studio, and he had like they would say, "Have you got like about a thousand unreleased songs and he said yeah i've got and it's just constantly mm. when he's touring he's constantly he'll stop and he'll just he'll he'll just he'll do a verse and he and he said i don't write yeah. anything down and it's just like there's just thoughts in my head and i'll just kind of spit just them at that it. point and i'll and i'll drop my bars and it's fascinating to see like how he works his work ethic and the mm. release of the mm. album and what it meant kind of like going forward because it's one of the this do you say 
how he pick, picks which ones to release then, if he's got a thousand of them. Um, no, he didn't. They didn't get into that sort of level of kind of like, so because the Carter 3 had come out and then the next album he was doing was a more experimental music one where he was mm. doing he was going to put in more rock music, pop music, obviously rap music, but he was just he's going to play guitar, there's going to be piano him playing piano and stuff. And then he'll yeah. do his bars and stuff on top of that and he'll sing the choruses, he'll sing the hooks. So he was mm. just going he's going very experimental for his next album, Reverb. Cool. Um and yeah, Good. it's really really fascinating. It's, it's it's amazing to kind of see him then you see behind the scenes of his tour because you're following him on his bus and he starts talking to you about stuff mm. and they're talking to him. Um, yeah, re- re- really, a, it's, it's quite an old because the Carter 3 must have come out maybe five or six years, maybe longer than that, a long time mm. ago. So, yeah, it's quite an old documentary. It's well worth watching. And um, yeah. also watch the Avicii. Do you know Avicii? No. Superstar DJ like David Guetta and like Mark Ronson okay. and people like that um he's huge was huge uh massive like um he would sell out tours stadiums arenas all sorts of stuff like just a dj had massive hit singles um and it's about it's incredible you watch him from being a young dj trying to make it through like how many hours and all the effort and stuff he puts in to the point where he's finally making it and he's like getting into big gigs and he's got like singles out. He's got an album out, and then he goes away and starts working his second album. And the and the pressures of gigging, like I think he does four or five hundred gigs in the space of I think it's four or five years, something like that. Constantly wow. gigging, gigging, gigging. And um, DJ sets tend to be quite late at night as well, so uh, mm. and too early hours. And so he's got to do that. He's got to be up during yeah. the day, you know, rehearsing and whatever. Yeah, mm. it's incredible. Five hundred. 500 gigs i think it's four or 500 it kept coming up on the screen that's that's half a terabyte (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's incredible (laughs) yes excellent good music news yeah i know because you i know you hate music but every so often you can tell me about it (laughs) yeah about it so yes um one's on um netflix the v2 one and the uh, Little Wayne one is on Amazon. Mm. Cool, cool. I forgot. I, I remembered something when you mentioned Sonic Forces, the um, the character customization. I remembered for uh, Big City Stories, the character customization is hilarious as well. Yeah. Like it's the um, when you create a character, uh, you can sort of change change the aspects about them as you can do in a lot of modern games sort of like micromanage their size and stuff but like you get to this, the stage of maybe you want to change their arm sizes it lets you change the arm size and like you just go one notch on and they go and they're like ginormous or the other way and then they're, they're like tiny like alien alien arms and the same with like hands and stuff it's just crazy it's nice. it's, it's 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 very much abusing in, in the sense of how they made the game <laughs> Yeah. Um, upcoming, I'd say I'm a bit excited for TK6 still, even though there's no real announcement. Um, yes. <laughs> this week has been a bit more um, leaking and a bit more rumour, possibly, of um, what's, of them making an announcement at some point. There's rumour that they might make an announcement at some point yes. soon, or, or at least a teaser of some kind. I, I'd say it's more likely to be a teaser. Um because there's a teaser image going around, which I don't know if it's legit or not, really. Yeah, I saw that as well on the Rockstar website. Yes. Um, they yeah, it's the Rockstar website. I visited the Rockstar website. I couldn't find it. I couldn't see the actual image myself. Maybe that's just because it's from the UK. Maybe it's only set up in the US at the moment. Oh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't I, know. I, I didn't look for it. I just I, I just read an article on it. But... I, I assume nothing is, is um, real until I've seen the evidence, because... Um, I, I I'm on uh, on Facebook. I'm on uh, you know fair few groups and stuff, and yeah. they're and they're constantly putting out um, fake things about PS5, and oh, you know yeah. they're fake. So to see something coming about GB6 when I know that it that they're that they're not. If it was a big news, they probably um, feed put it in their feed themselves. You know, put something of out themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So straight away, I'm looking at the website, thinking I'm going to I'm going straight to the website, having a look around, thinking now this is all just news about Red Dead Redemption Two online stuff and <laughs> yes. GTA Five online. But maybe it's a trick. Yeah, maybe it's a trick. It could, yeah, so it, a it trick. could be, it could be um, but it, it seems legit. But um, yeah, until I see it, I can't I can't confirm it. Um, but I'm still excited for it because I I do we we know it's coming. Um, yes. But when it's coming, we, we'll, we probably won't know. Um, I, I can imagine it coming out by Christmas for a for the PS5 release, but I can also imagine them sort of t- keeping it maybe an extra year to sort of, sort of tease people and make sure the the console has got a good, ba- good, um, solid basis, sales basis first, sales base first. Exactly. The, the um, difference is, I think Sony and Microsoft need. Uh, GTA more than GTA needs yeah, so they can exactly. come out when they want but I mean, for a launch yeah. title if you came out with GTA 6 yeah. that's huge for that's, both that's Sony the console seller if, if Sony secured rights secured the exclusive to it that's a console seller but they would never yes. go for the exclusive they'd maybe go I don't know at maximum I'd say 6 month exclusive maybe more likely a month or two of, ex- of you get the game first for a month. But they'd have to pay some serious money to Rockstar. Cause there's, yeah. no, there's no way Rockstar would turn around and say, yeah, we'll be exclusive to you because we don't need you guys as much as you need us. And the thing is, if they want to make the the record-breaking sales again, they're going to have to wait till everyone's got the console. They're going to have exactly. to look at the, how many people have the console already. Yeah, the people are going to buy the consoles just to play the game, but you need to have at least half your players to really have the console before you go out the policing so yeah but yeah i'm looking to it when it comes um still rumors of vice city possibly there's a new location but the if the image is legit it, it looks kind of upscale sort of rich looking so maybe a vegas game or something i don't know oh, that'd be wicked. obviously they had vegas in san, san andreas because they have three cities in that game you yeah. still haven't played it? No. Nope. <laughs> you haven't played the best game in the series? Well, GTA yeah. Five, yeah, I played GTA <laughs> That's the best-selling game in the series. <laughs> it's, no, I've played GTA, I think it's 2 or 1, the, over the, the, oh, um, yeah. over the overhead one yes. years ago. Yeah. And one and I two played, of those. Like that, yeah. And I played GTA Five. And 4. And 4, <laughs> yes, but yeah. It's because you got to the job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't get out. I just couldn't get out. I know. I just couldn't get out. I'm sure so. you just it just was a glitch in the game. We had to do is restart the level and do it again. And yeah. again, and again, and again. Yeah. Oh, you I, did that, didn't you? Yeah. I did that so many times. The problem was you had to go all the way back. So, um, yeah. With, with that level, you have to start the drive again. You have to drive yeah. to the bank each time. Then you get to the mm. bank and you cut the cutscene and then you you got to shoot your way out. Then you go shoot your way down the street. Then you got to yeah, go yeah. under the, the sewers and then come back yeah. up. And then as soon as you get into a car or anything, you're five star and you have to run mm. away from everything. Yeah. And then the mission would end. But I only mm. once made it out of the sewer, got into a car and I drove for ages trying to get rid of the five stars and I just couldn't. Then I ran back wow. into the sewers and then went in the opposite direction. And, and, and then, yeah, I think I think I still died somehow. So I kept running out of ammo. Don't they have pay and spray in, in GTA 4? Can you just drive into one of them and get rid of your five stars? Have what? Sorry, pay? Um, I can't remember now. So it's been so long since I played that level. I gave I... up on the game. Hmm. Mm. I'll, have to, I'll check it out at some point. I do want to replay it eventually, so I will check it out. And yes. See it. I do remember there being some harder levels. I, f- I found them. I found them okay, but then when I replayed it before, I, or someone else was playing it, and I was like, "Oh, it's an easy mission." I did find them quite hard sometimes. <laughs> I forgot how hard they were. GTA Five is definitely more the more honed controls, that, and easier game to play in that way. Oh yeah, definitely. So much easier. And it's the same with San Andreas compared to the older games on the console, you know. It's the top of the game for controls. Even easier to control than GTA 4. Oh, maybe I'll have to play that. 
<laughs> but not it's not as good as GTA Five controls. No, but, yeah. then, then it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, oh well, I was just tricking you anyway. But yeah, it, it... <laughs> no, it's true. It is true. But yeah, it's not. It's not going to be that great for you still. But I just, I do think you still need to play that game. I recommend that game to anyone. You can play it on PS4, PS3, PS2, Xbox, whatever you've got, PC. Cool. So we're done. How do they contact us? Um, look in the description below. <laughs> <It's simple. laughs> Thanks you for listening. Twitter, however you, you however you heard this, uh, tell a friend, subscribe, uh, download it for someone else. I was, you know, when I was watching the Jimbo show um, on South Park, they did mm. say that they doubled their audience. So they originally had six and they went up to 12. So if everyone just told one friend, or wow. or an enemy doesn't have to be a friend. We would double our audience the same yeah, manner. Tell an enemy. If you really don't <laughs> yes. like the show, tell all your enemies. <laughs> Look, check, check out this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on uh, Twitter. All the handles are below. But yes, thanks for listening. Subscribe. Put a five star review on, and then just later the show, and we will improve it for the next one. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for all the yeah. feedback. Right. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's me that's talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant you. <laughs> <laughs> my guy reviews the podcasts <laughs>